what's up? Hey! Hello, everyone. This is the BNS Show. I am Brian, and this is Stan. Yes, and today, Bill Burr, Black Friends Clothes in Harlem. Have you seen this before? I have not seen this. I don't think I I've have. Seen, I've seen some of his older specials, so I might I've recognize seen it. Okay. I've seen this, but Brian hasn't, so it's going to be really This is from 2005. It's 14 years ago. Yeah. Before he kind of went bald. Yeah. But I, I, and I, I met Bill Burr. Oh, two, yeah? Yeah, I met him in 2009. Yeah. Funny. Like, really. Yeah, really. His, his new special. Have you seen the new I, one? I've seen the new special, too. Oh, my God. I'm a big Bill, uh, Bill Burr fan. Yeah. Uh, He's but this is uh, Brian's first time uh, seeing this uh, Black Friends Clothes in Harlem, so it's going to be kind of interesting yeah. to, to see his reaction. So, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Actually, I got a couple of uh, friends of uh, African persuasion, and uh, I got to get rid of them, man. I got to make two. <laughs> I'm fine, I'm spending too much money on clothes, hanging out with them. Cause I gotta like fucking try to keep up with their wardrobe. I don't have a problem with that with you. I don't yeah. have the... I'm simple. I'm not impressed with you. Yeah, right, he does. Yes, black guys impress with him. No, he's saying he has to spend money on his own. Oh. So that he can impress his black friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, yeah you're not doing that. <laughs> I'm not doing that yeah. with you. <laughs> it's like every time they go out, they got all brand new shit on. <laughs> all brand new shit, so when I show up, with my white version of brand new, which is, you know, I basically, I ironed the shit, right? I ironed it, right? It's new. They just start trashing me. I can't keep up with them, man. They got like fucking 58 pairs of sneakers. Have you noticed that shit? Like every color fucking Timberland. And I don't give a shit what fucked up color their shirt is. They got a pair of shoes to match it and a hat. It's like a rule or something. They're the worst. Even when you wear some new shit, there's like some sort of rule that you gotta like space out the amount of time with, within which like that you wear it. Cause God forbid you wear the same shirt within a 10 day period, one of them's gonna notice. <laughs> All of a sudden just look at you funny like, this motherfucker's got the same shit he had on last Tuesday. <laughs> and then the whole crowd's like, oh shit. <laughs> and everybody just starts making fun of your fucking clothes. First they do the math, like, what was that, five days ago? Five days, this motherfucker got five shirts! <laughs> he got five shirts! They start breaking it down. Yo, his first shirt be saying Monday, next shirt be saying Tuesday. Yo, on the weekend, he ain't be wearing no shirts. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's actually funny, you know what? That's actually how, uh, how I judge black guys now. When I first came to the city, like, all black people scared me. I was like the typical white dude from like the suburbs, you know what I mean? It had no frame of reference, you know? So my only frame of reference with black people was like, those, remember those early 90s gangster rap videos? <laughs> Throw the fucking LA riots in there, man. It was fucking horrible PR. <laughs> I'm watching the videos, he's got nice cars, he's got all the women, and he's still fucking mad. <laughs> <laughs> These black dudes are never happy. <laughs> but after 10 years of living in the city, this is how I narrow it down. Well, the black dude scares me now. Black dudes with dirty sneakers scare the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> no. I figured out my head, because I know if I'm hanging out with them, that's the last shit that they're going to let go, the immediate shit that they have on. So I think, you know, if his sneakers are fucked up, that means his life is fucked up. Every time he leaves his building, the whole neighborhood, oh, shit! <laughs> Everyone starts making fun of him. He's on the train in a bad mood. I kind of have this howdy doody, kind of mug me kind of face. And I'm not saying something's gonna happen, I'm just saying, I'm paying attention. So I've been seeing this girl recently, uh, this black girl, right? She lives up in Harlem, you know? Gone out like three, four times, you know? First time we hung out, we hung out with the village. He's uh, married to uh, a black chick. Yeah. yeah. They have a kid now. Yeah, nice. When I met him, he had just got, the, just got a dog. <laughs> okay. And he made that shit just super funny. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Where was this when you? At, in Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, 2009. Yeah. So it's like five years or two, four years after this. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, what's going on with the internet? Hang up. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Area in New York, you know, which is sort of like a racially mixed area. <laughs> so shit was cool, you know what I mean? Second time you hung out was more like Midtown, you know. 
Then the third time, she called me at like 3.30 in the morning, and she wanted me to come up to her apartment, right? So it's 3.30 in the morning, she lives in Harlem, I look how I look, so it's a fucking situation. <laughs> Cause you know the deal, right? Basically a white dude feels comfortable up to about like 98, 99th street, you know what I'm saying? The second the streets start getting into like triple digits, like 100, 101st street, start getting like a little asthma, like, ah, oh, fuck, it's starting to get a little high up here. <laughs> you feel that little tightness in your chest? Can you feel that? 106th street, you're like leaning on shit, like, dude, where'd all the cabs go? <laughs> How come there's no taxis up here? <laughs> What's a bodega? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so I'm praying to God she's gonna tell me to take the subway, get off at like 105th Street, 130th, you know, which is like the first stop in Harlem where I can still look over my shoulder and see like all the white people like disappearing over the horizon, you know? <laughs> and she goes, no man, you wanna get on the Uptown 2-3 train, you wanna get off at 125th Street. I'm like, God, fuck, 125th Street. Jesus Christ, that's like right in the middle of everything. I'm gonna be surrounded on all four sides. I can't fucking do this. So, at this point, I'm really trying to hide like the bitchy tone that's starting to creep into my voice, you know? And I'm trying to ask for really specific directions for when I get up there, because I want to know exactly where I'm going. So she starts naming the streets I have to go down, and every other street up there is named after like a black leader, you know? She's like, make a left on Adam Clayton. Take a right on Frederick Douglass. I'm like, ah, fuck Adam Clayton. <laughs> no, dude, go on the internet and look up Adam Clayton. Did he kill a bunch of white people during a slave revolt? <laughs> dude, I ain't going up there until you know what Adam Clayton did. Fuck this shit. <laughs> so at this point, I'm really having a battle with myself. Because I'm thinking I can't do this, right? I'm like, I can't do this, but my dick's going, no, come on, man, we can do this, all right? <laughs> Just relax, <laughs> pull yourself together, and get on the goddamn train, right? So as always, I listen to my dick. <laughs> oh yeah, I get on the train. By the time I get up there, it's like five or four in the morning, right? I'm staying on like Malcolm X and like Danny Glover or some shit. <laughs> like, ah, ah, I don't even know who the hell I'm at. <laughs> when I see the street, I wanna go up. I wanna go up St. Nick, I can literally see her apartment building but there's like five or six black dudes standing right on the corner, right where I want to walk by. So I'm like, fuck! <laughs> Thought I was on like some reality show at that point, like some sort of like white guy survivor. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm thinking, I gotta walk right by these guys, right? You know what's funny? I think that they were actually more surprised to see me than I was scared, you know? And I was really, really scared, you know? But I'm also really, really white, you know? Like shockingly Caucasian. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, if you're not ready for me, I can, like, surprise you. <laughs> no, especially if you live up there. You've probably seen a white person for hours, possibly days. So when I show up, it's almost like magical. Like a leprechaun came out of nowhere, you know? I felt like I should have, like, a little pot of gold. Like a rainbow behind me. Top of the morning till you locked it. Kind of dance my way past them. But it's been going all right, you know? Once I get in her apartment, I'm fine, you know? I relax, sit down, you know, watch a hip-hop countdown. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend like I know the groups, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's funny. It's just getting there that's a fucking pain in the ass. But you know, I don't get mad at it, because I figure, you know, black dudes gotta go through the same shit though, right? When you go out to the suburbs, go fuck a white girl, <laughs> right? Just that same awful feeling or just leaving your people behind, you know, just less and less of you as you're fucking driving out there. Probably start off lean and you're all fucking cool. 20 minutes in, you're driving like 10 and 2, the baby's out like, dude, I don't like this shit. I don't like this shit at all. There's too much grass, I don't see any rims. This is fucked up. None of the windows are tinted. I can clearly see white people in every car. This is fucked up. Listen, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much for coming out. God bless you. Thank you very much. That was awesome, man. I'm always, uh, I admire anybody that can talk about race, especially a white guy, man, you know, and make it funny for people. Man, I, I, when I was talking to him um, at the punchline, yeah. he was, he, he touched on, because he, he was on a show called Laugh of a Loser. Yeah. 
in Atlanta, which is like a, basically a black show. <laughs> and he killed. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we just had like a little conversation about it. Real nice guy, but I'm talking about from the time he touched the stage to the time he got off, just slayed. Yeah. And you know, that was 2009. And then 2014, 15, I took uh, my fiance to see him. She's yeah. a big Bill Burr fan. And yeah. He killed there, so, uh, and he always has something new. Mm -hmm. You know, he's one of those guys that's he's always writing. He's always writing. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, you guys. Uh, <laughs> if you have any more uh, Bill Burr requests, please send them our way. Now, yeah. I'm sure there's some stuff that I haven't seen, but I, yeah. I did see this one. Uh, so I would love to see something that I haven't seen and react yeah. with you. you know? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. All right, see you next show. Hit subscribe. Uh, I'm Brian. I'm Stan. Peace. 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 Oh. Don't you like the way that he went from the white guy's perspective to the black yeah. guy's? Yeah. Very smart. Yes, very smart. Oh. That's good writing. Yeah.